एपिसोड 18 एक्सपर्ट स्पीक इन लॉकडाउन पार्ट टू हाय पीटर बैक टू आर रेगुलर रिकॉर्डिंग मोड या मैन इट्स इट्स स्ट्रेंज हाउ कंफर्टेबल वी बिकम ओवर द पास्ट मंथ और लॉन्गर ऑन जस्ट रिकॉर्डिंग ओवर स्काइप हा yeah and it's just not us you know uh, a lot of guests also have been very comfortable talking to us over the phone and uh, i think this whole stay at home is working for everyone it's it's great in a way you know today also we got a good guest and i think uh, our first out of mumbai guest yeah i mean it was nice to hear from someone not based in mumbai yeah and you know of all places goa so our guest this week is Shobika and uh, she's a psychologist specializing in children uh last week since we had two perspectives looking at parents we thought why don't we look at the other end of the spectrum which is the children then let's just uh, get straight into it and hear it from Shobika so oh, i'd like to welcome our guest on pops in a pod uh, we've got uh, Dr. Shobita, is that correct? Uh, I'm. I go by a psychologist. You cannot call me a doctor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shobita, if you can just t- introduce yourself to our listeners. So, as I mentioned, I'm a psychologist, and I have been practicing as one uh, since almost eight years now, having graduated from Sophia College and then Bombay University. Uh, I live in Goa. I have my own private practice, and uh, I also do a lot of freelancing uh, jobs as a counselor as a psychologist i write very actively for mental health and also for goa because i just love the fact that i am in goa which is just the best place to be uh, for your mental health as per research as well so yeah that that's about me i'm a mom to a 2 year old who is getting super energetic day by day and um, yeah just a few hats here and there before we get into anything else Uh, mm-hmm. I had casually mentioned to my wife, you know, when this mm-hmm. before this whole situation of the lockdown got serious and all, that you know what, it would be so nice if we were in Goa at this time, summer and things like that. Could you, as someone who's living in Goa, confirm if that's really how it is, and how has the lockdown been with you? Goa in the summers is just, uh, I would say, you know, like I am a die die hard fan of Goa, more so than my husband who has been living here for twenty five thirty years now. And summers in Goa for me meant, you know, um, going for all these friends outings and the uh, cashew uh, harvest festivals which was so integral of course none of it is happening right now because of the lockdown uh, but coming to the lockdown things are definitely much much better here compared to the rest of india uh, goa has not only managed to flatten the curve but we don't have any active cases at the moment so life is slowly coming back on track shops are opening my own private practice has resumed with limited hours of operation so we are slowly trying to get back the routine that, that's great to hear so goa definitely is the preferred destination irrespective of lockdown vacation no matter what it is goa is the place to be absolutely so shavika if you can just um you know driving driving straight in we have a basic understanding of you know individuals during this lockdown period when i say mm-hmm. individuals i mean adults right we mm-hmm. had this similar mm-hmm. conversation uh mm-hmm. last week as well and we got a and a good insight in in terms of working uh, at us whether at home or otherwise but there are children as well who definitely are individuals have their own sense of personality and they also know exactly what's kind of going on you know whether uh, what whatever age that they are in um if you can just give us an overview as to what is it that generally children are feeling during this period so uh what you have said is you know absolutely right and uh, with respect to children what what we need to understand as adults is children right now across age groups are in a way imitating the emotions and the coping patterns which parents are displaying at home we have to acknowledge that you know as parents uh we especially you know the parents who are working outside of the house uh, uh they have you know they are spending a lot of time indoors now like on 24 hours 7 days of a week and children were not used to having parents around all day even if uh, one parent was home the other was not or both parents were not home all day long so 
everybody has a certain rhythm to life you know just like we have a rhythm to life even children have a certain routine whether it involves going to the school or for younger toddlers infants being at home but not having certain people at home throughout the day so it it's uh, their world has also changed completely because of this pandemic and uh, therefore we are seeing a lot of uh, uh, mental health related issues amongst children some of it may be uh, you know much uh, milder uh, but we are seeing children also showing you know anxiety and stress related symptoms and manifestations of those in the current time and this is something that could become serious in the long term i mean we, we are just not talking that kids are getting mm-hmm. bored so you know that that that's probably why they're facing such issues mm-hmm. this could be related to many other things just apart from getting bored at home and not going out in fact i was not at all hinting towards boredom uh, right now of course children are getting bored at home uh, because schools are closed some of the some are uh, camps are not going to take place anymore they cannot go for the much much awaited summer vacation uh, but boredom is right now according to me a secondary concern the primary concern is children's anxiety at the moment the anxiety that comes from a change of routine and the anxiety that comes with the fact that there is not going to be any choice that i as a child uh, don't have a choice to hang out with my friends or go down to the park to play so that choice factor which has completely been taken away from children uh, even if as parents we want to give them that choice is also a very major driving uh, force behind uh, the mental health issues that children may be experiencing right now you know shobhika you brought up a very interesting point of anxiety now you know as mm-hmm. adults over a period of time you know we can identify uh, symptoms or something that would lead to anxiety or stress with adolescents or teenagers they can express themselves or we can tell them you know this is what you need to look out for but for children who are experiencing this for the first time say like under 8 or even younger than that is there any way that you can kind of identify is there some telltale signs that you can tell from probably yes in fact uh, uh, children may show certain symptoms of anxiety the most commonly seen symptoms right now would be irritability uh anger so for example you say no to a child for doing you know something they want to do and you say no as a parent uh typically they would have you know maybe argued a little or just followed your advice but now they are going to you know fight back um, argue uh, be very irritable about it so irritability anger definitely up there sleep difficulties frequently crying um for the uh, slightly you know adolescents and teens we may also see some kind of self harm because there are just so many people at home suddenly and uh, we are not being allowed to do what we want to do so um, one day is to you know just turn inward for a uh, for the anxiety release so um, eating patterns can get disturbed children may not eat especially if they are young kids we are talking about toddlers and all you may see a disturbance in their eating pattern or you may also see you know kids overeating so sleep appetite uh even uh, you know connecting with friends even if as parents you are providing them that platform that okay baba connect with your friends you know talk to them it's okay use the phone they may not uh, want to talk to their friends all the time so withdrawing from friends not sitting for dinner or lunch together these could be some commonly uh, visible signs of anxiety amongst children So I'm glad you kind of brought this up because um, now that we understand uh, the basics of you know the stemming of anxiety and what it could lead or manifest into, I've been noticing something about my daughter, and I've spoken uh, about this in the past as well. That I've seen a sudden shift in her mood. Right, so she started screaming a lot. Now we don't know whether because that. something to do with the fact that she's getting older she's approaching you know 4 years old uh, or it's it's just a combination of the lo- lockdown uh, she's throwing a lot of tantrums right she wants something and then it's followed by stomping of her of her foot now i don't know if she picked this up from some cartoon that she's seen because if she has and that's a very very badly made cartoon um but we see these signs which are both very emotional and and physical in nature is this 
just is this very typical of uh, like a toddler behaving in in such a situation or there are other manifestations as well clearly this kind of behavior can be seen for different reasons so we cannot pinpoint and say that this is only because of the lockdown but it could be possible that the lockdown is one of the many factors that is making your daughter behave like this so what i'm trying to say here is that she is anyways at that age where uh, this kind of uh, uh, you know tantrum throwing trying to get your way uh, is something that toddlers just pick up okay but because of the lockdown not having a, an outlet not being exposed to any different situation you know not having friends to talk to uh, not even i'm i'm getting your daughter for probably already you know going to the play school or uh, kindergarten so, that's right um, that's right you know that's all completely been taken away so all of that combined together could be contributing to this kind of behavior manifestation it's strange because we've read this a lot and we've also heard it from multiple sources that you need to prime your children about this particular situation um and you know slowly slowly we try to explain to our daughter that oh you know these are weird times and there's this corona virus disease thing going on uh got to go down and the thing is she sees a lot of cops around in our area because you can hear them you know they they are with their blaring uh, microphones and uh, you know the the sirens and everything so she knows that okay this is not common because it's something that she's never seen before for some strange reason there's this this, this concept of fear when she hasn't gone down she doesn't even go to the building terrace because she has this fear that some cop is going to come and throw her in jail so mm-hmm. and we try so hard to explain that it's not going to happen don't worry about it like and but she's adamant that no i will not go down no matter what she's happy being in the house doing very things in whatever way that we engage her but this mm-hmm. is weird fear we don't know why certain and how to kind of get rid of it so um you know what that does remind me of is um, so obviously like i said you know in goa we can finally move around a little bit so we did t- take our child out who's two you know we took him out the other day and um, when uh, he was doing some mischief in the car and uh, instantly the first thing that came in mouth was you know to tell him that see you see the police uh, if you do naughty the police will take you uh, and uh, then i had to correct myself you know there and uh, remind myself you know that okay this is not something that i have to tell him because then the, the fear develops that how the fear psychosis develops So when you share this about your daughter the one thing that does come to my mind is that even though as parents you may not have actively said something to her about you know the police uh, or the police taking her away if she goes out in uh, the open maybe that's a message she has received from somewhere maybe it was a conversation that she heard uh, from the neighbors or maybe something that she saw on the tv or just a fact that you know there's just so much of sirens around and it's such a novel unique situation uh, that she associated uh, going out with being uh, taken away by the cops so we don't know how children sometimes you know perceive messages from th- their environment but children are very very uh, you know uh, receptive to said and unsaid things yeah, i mean i'm glad you said that because i'm certainly guilty of that but to what my son uh, now doing is when I tell him hey let's at least go outside in the building compound he says daddy daddy 5 minutes we'll go after some time so and it's kind of strange to hear him say that to me because that's kind of what i tell my wife so you know like you said kids are kind of imitating adults now and they pick up more of these things that we're doing uh, day in and day mm-hmm. out another thing i mean you know there's a lot of talk about screen time and uh, you know in our previous uh, episodes nadir and i both have talked to we even spoke uh, last week about screen time uh, from a child's perspective if you can kind of explain that to us because mm-hmm. there are multiple things i mean the parallel story i can tell you or the way i see it is you know when we were growing up the television was the thing and you know our parents kept telling us like you know if you sit all, all the time in front of the tv you get glasses or you're addicted to the tv but i haven't watched tv so long so you know behavioral patterns change is that something similar you're noticing with kids or what do you feel about that 
Uh, I would agree with you on that when you said that, uh, you know, uh, when the TV was around at home uh, at a very accessible location, obviously as kids, we have spent a lot of time sitting in front of the TV. But now the mobile is the new TV. And as parents or as adults, uh, you know, we are always carrying our cell phones around with us. In fact, like my child is only two, right, almost from when he was one year old, he knew and he still knows, you know, which cell phone belongs to which adult in the house, <laughs> not just our, but even the staff. And that has happened because we are always carrying our cell phones around. Our world is revolving in our, you know, in, in that little screen. So clearly children imitate that behavior. They view this little black silver device as something which uh, has to be treasured, something that is an integral part of our entire being. So they also automatically latch on to this. And when everybody in the house, including the staff or the visiting staff, everybody has a cell phone which they are carrying with them 24-7, the child is also obviously going to demand, you know, that Are, everybody has it. Why don't I have this thing which seems to be such an important part? Like, the mummy hair, if mom is there, then, you know, this black little thing is always with her. So where is my black little thing? If they do it like that. And also, one thing that I have been telling, you know, professionally to a lot of parents who have been reaching out to me about the screen time is, you know, there's obviously parents are thinking that uh, the screen time is going uh, uh, up during the lockdown. Uh, so what I am telling people is a little bit of screen time right now is absolutely okay. Uh and by little bit, I mean, you know, depending on your child's age, you need to take a call on what is best for your child. But some amount of screen time, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes of their favorite uh, cartoon show um, or whatever the, you know, the child in the house likes to watch, it, it also is providing them that little comfort and emotional comfort to latch on to. This is something familiar that they were doing even before the lockdown. They were watching a particular cartoon. So now taking that away completely just because as parents we are also home and therefore we can do 100 different activities with the child will be viewed more as a threat rather than a um, something healthy from the child's perspective I'm talking about. So a little bit of screen time once in a day or once in a few days is okay. You know, it, it's, uh, I, I, I was just having this uh, debate with somebody recently about, you know, screen time, no screen time, regimented screen time. Um, something really good has come off it, I'll, I'll be honest. It, you know, my wife and I, when we are working and outside the home, um, we try and ensure that she's not exposed to the screen as much. But I, I really value what you just mentioned that a child will always try and imitate what the adults of the house are doing. So you can't be going and screaming at the child, holding a phone, saying, hey, you can't be on the phone. And then, you know, two <laughs> minutes later, you're on the phone. So uh, I, I completely kind of understand that. But in this lockdown period, we've also relaxed a little. But we've noticed some very interesting things. Her vocabulary has tremendously improved. She's using all these big words in, in the right context. You know? That is, I was sitting on, on her side of the bed and she's like, Papa, you can't sit here. This is my pretend castle. I said, what? Pretend castle? Like she's using two big words in like one sentence. And I was like, that's great. And obviously, we don't mean to undermine her. And we play along. We say, oh, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, your pretend castle. And then, then, and now suddenly she's just starting, just using it too much. It's getting a little annoying. But she's learning so many things. That day, early in the morning, she wakes up at 8 in the morning. And, you know, she, she, she turns to my wife and so out of nowhere, she's just like, Mommy, do you know what color comes when you mix red and blue? <laughs> and I kid you not. My wife had to Google it because she she didn't she, she couldn't come up with an answer. And she's like, no, I don't know. You tell me. It's like, it's purple. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure, it's purple. So they clearly are learning. But I, I, there's always this fear, you know, thanks to YouTube, that you get into some rabbit hole and you'll just end up watching some video where somebody's chopping Mickey Mouse's head or something. There's always that rational fear, right? So... I mean, there are the good things also, but there are the mm -hmm. bad things also that you kind of need to need to balance. Do you see something similar or maybe do you see a change with older kids and screen time? Definitely, yes. How younger kids and infants, you know, are exposed to the um, screen time is going to be much different than the older kids. In fact, as uh, adults, we have greater control over what the younger lot ends up watching. 
uh, even the uh, risks that you just mentioned about you know chanting on inappropriate stuff on youtube is something that as parents we can uh, definitely have more control with for the younger lot but for the older lot you have to uh, you can't really have a direct control is what i think uh, but uh, one way to ensure that you know they don't end up watching something which is completely inappropriate for their age is to have healthy conversations with them about what they are watching uh, have the parental controls which these apps allow you to have you know uh, so that you can also know what they are watching and restrict the usage of some of the media but ultimately the main thing that is that going to matter is having healthy conversations about okay what are you watching and uh, if they, if your child does admit to you know watching something which is really inappropriate you have to also tread carefully and bring up that subject uh and talk in a constructive manner to the child because as indian parents we tend to first thing is you know scream and shout and use the word no and then we go on to the explanation now i was just thinking the same thing in my head that i think the word that we have most used and abused during this lockdown <laughs> is no and i'm sure that must be having some form of some issues in that kid's head that what is this word why does it keep coming up again and again and again i'm sure there's some yeah, yeah, anxiety absolutely those maybe the kids after the lockdown are going to imitate us and keep saying no for everything um well i'm a psychologist but i have said my fair share of no's to my kiddo and he has told his fair share of no's to me now he just tells me mama nahi no <laughs> and i'm like okay fine at least tell me what is this no about because i always tell you also the psychologist in me starts you know trying to talk to the child <laughs> Uh, and uh, he just cannot talk too much so he doesn't explain beyond that but he just will just keep repeating no nay no nay and then i realize that, you know okay i gave that to him so yeah, yeah. there's a popular joke in our house where my wife keeps throwing at me which is like you know you keep telling her no and trust me it's not me even she does it all the time but somehow i'm always the victim and so like you know when she grows up and when she throws you in an old age home then we'll see how how this thing pans out for you right now so, yeah well, we are all kind of worried about that stage Then that's a long way to go. Yeah, I hope it's a long way to go. So another thing that's come to the mm-hmm. fore uh, in recent times is homeschooling. Uh, you know, a lot of schools uh, exams got deferred or they had the exam, mm-hmm. and now you know, consider for older children, this is a bigger thing where you know now it's become a new thing for them or a normal thing for them actually. I must say of mm-hmm. having classes over Zoom. uh at right. this at this point the personal story i can add here mm-hmm. is uh, the play school that my son goes to uh, in mm-hmm. the last week has been trying to implement that with him unfortunately mm-hmm. we haven't been too successful because my son associates you know the teachers and uh, the people who run the place with mm-hmm. actually physically going to school so he's been quite resistant and refuses to come in front uh, of mm-hmm. the phone or even the laptop when we tried uh, it uh do you see you know how do you see a shift happening towards that so from a short term perspective i think it's really good that schools are trying to reach out and uh, keep the students involved uh because like i was talking about earlier that uh, not going to the school or not you know going for the regular classes that our kids are used to uh has kind of uh, and that whole sense of normalcy it has thrown it out of the window so it's really important good that schools are you know um, reaching out to students but the one thing that i do feel is also important that schools shouldn't be very uh, strict about attendance or assignment submission so this should not be uh, looked at the zoom sessions and all that should not be looked at as you know 100% you have to do only and if you don't do for whatever reason irrespective of the reason uh, the child is going to be you know uh, given bad remarks or something because this is a very unique situation none of us have ever thought that we are going to live through a pandemic and yeah. to expect students to adhere to all the uh, sessions and be present do the assignments as if the situation was completely normal that that would be really stressing students out i know of parents who have who are reaching out to me because they are getting stressed out that you know for some reason if the student is not willing to go online for the session or if the net is not working they don't know what to do because they are afraid that they are going to miss out on the school work 
right now is not the time to do the school work the way we used to do it when there was no pandemic and uh, just you know as you were sharing your personal story it also brings to my mind so my child was supposed to start his play group uh, in april but obviously he didn't so what we are getting is a list of activities to do um, on a daily basis for the, for him you know to keep him engaged and in the beginning i was doing it very diligently but then i realized that my focus was shifting from making him learn the task to actually video recording the task uh because that was that is a requirement that you know the task needs to be recorded and submitted whenever the school reopens so now i actually just you know do the activities with him a few times if he wants to do it that is if he doesn't want to do it i don't even try because uh i just think he's too small and it is okay if i am trying to you know cope up with the a toddler my own work the family life everything so these sessions are definitely good is what i'm trying to say here but we shouldn't look at them as uh, completely uh, you know mandatory and there shouldn't be any repercussions if the children or the parents are not able to do it now from a long term perspective uh, for those who have been homeschooling uh, well and good uh, as a psychologist although i do feel that uh, social connection connections are more important than academic growth and uh, i strongly subscribe to the fact that a child goes to school not to study or get marks but to make social connections and to learn to thrive in the social world and that no zoom session or online mentoring can provide us so children will eventually have to go back to school so just again i just want to understand your personal opinion like uh, you know peter and i keep discussing that because of this lockdown so many things will change for the future and even at a mm-hmm. corporate company level for example you know right. work from home will become a norm and mm-hmm. um, you know there will be certain policies that will be relaxed maybe there will be an introduction of a four day week or a three day week or, you know complete work from home but from a kids perspective um, that social connection uh, the opposite of social distancing is absolutely mm-hmm. important for a child to grow both emotionally mentally and physically of course so like a zoom call in the long run um, will not become a norm i'm assuming i, I just want to your personal view on this right so uh, what i meant to say was that the zoom call these online sessions can always be an alternative or an additional you know an add on uh, but i don't see them becoming the way forward for education because education according to me is not just about studying math science or sociology those kind of things it's it's more about you know the, how do you uh, the street smartness how how do you learn to you know um, make your connections and uh, uh, grow socially because the social intelligence is so much more important than the academic intelligence and therefore i don't see this being the norm that okay the classes can happen online what is the need to go to school anymore of course i am not against parents who are homeschooling or who do genuinely believe in homeschooling because if you look at the whole homeschooling concept also what i understand of it is that even though you are not sending your child for the regular school for to the to a regular school you are still taking your child out you are still having play dates you are still you know uh, sending them for extra curricular classes so that they learn a skill or two so the social connection is happening there also from that perspective i think zoom is definitely not to be a replacement of schools but can be an alternative i'm sure you also got a lot of these forwards on whatsapp or on social media when the uh, whole lockdown started uh, i think in the first week or so if i remember well a lot of people started saying that you know what 9 months mm-hmm. from now we're going to see a lot of new babies being born and stuff like that <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah so which brings me to my question i mean all three of us actually have one child uh, at the moment uh, mm-hmm. have you noticed you know single children versus you know having siblings or say multiple siblings has that dynamic played a different role in uh, the children's mental health or mm-hmm. the way they are okay so i uh, that children is complex to answer the question okay. but i'm going to still you know try and answer it from my understanding of it is that to be very honest being a single child is also good and having siblings one or multiple is equally good 
so what i'm trying to say here is that just because you're a single child doesn't put you in a worse situation because of the lockdown or generally speaking and uh, because you have like a sibling uh, it also doesn't make things any easier or worse uh it's just different situations come into play so one benefit that i do see of having a sibling is that the child has someone more immediate in their age to learn from and adapt their coping skills so if your child is 4 and the elder child is let's say 6 or 7 years old and the 7 year old child is coping uh, remarkably well from the lockdown the younger one automatically views the lockdown as something which is normal because there is a role model so if we again go back to the whole imitation thing so if the elder sibling is coping well the younger one ends up coping well and mo- unfortunately we also see that if the elder sibling is having difficulty coping sometimes the younger siblings also start showing those very difficulties not to mention that it can be a little handful for the parents so if the two of them are not in uh, tandem and they tend to like you know argue or have fights so there are pros and cons of both the situations is just a matter of uh, the child's own individual ability and as adults what kind of assistance we provide them in dealing with it um whether you have one kid or four um i think children have uh, they just, each each situation uh, lends itself uniquely to how the child copes with it so considering i was the elder one of three uh, i mm-hmm. totally know what you're talking about when you're talking about the coping uh, thing in there so Thank you so much, uh, Shovika. I think it's been quite an interesting chat we've had with you, especially from the child's perspective. Considering the last few weeks we've been talking primarily about the parents, it's good to get an mm-hmm. understanding from the child's perspective. And I'm sure everyone who's listening has gained some understanding and would definitely be useful in the weeks to come. I'm sure. Thank you so much for uh, making me a part of this. I really loved uh, interacting with the two of you, and I'm definitely going to now subscribe to your podcast and listen to it because I wasn't aware of the uh, the same before. Um, it's a wonderful job that you guys are doing. Uh, you know, to um, reach out to people uh, in these tough times in your own way. So thank you, thank you for having me. Um, Before we let you go, if anyone mm-hmm. wants to reach out to you, how can they do mm-hmm. so? Whoever is listening in, if you on social media, do you have uh, anything you would like to share? Sure. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, they just have to look for my Instagram or Twitter handle, which is Goa Counselor. That's quite easy, I guess. And so very apt also. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Avika. We uh, really appreciated uh, you know you remove time for this. and uh, you know i don't know about the listeners but uh, peter and i have definitely learned quite a bit from this uh, conversation and hopefully we can try and implement it in our own homes and see where that little thing is going before the corona <laughs> and so yeah it's a race against the child of the corona virus but thank you so much we really appreciate it thank you thank you very much that's all i guess from us from this episode drop us a line at pops in a pod at gmail.com or you can follow us on instagram just search for pops in a pod you can drop in a comment on any of our posts or uh, like us share us anything that yeah. you might like want to do yeah so until next time here is peter pop and this is another pop see ya